A convex spherical mirror whose focal length has a magnitude of 18.2 centimeters is to form an image 10.8 centimeters behind the mirror. Where should the object be placed, and what is the magnification of the mirror? Now, in order to get this right, there's a couple things up front. The focal length for a convex mirror is always going to be negative, so it gives us the magnitude, but it doesn't give us the sign. Also, the, the image is behind the mirror, so anytime Q is behind the mirror, that's also going to be negative. So F is equal to negative 18.2 centimeters, and uh, Q is equal to negative 10.8 centimeters. Now we'll start off with the mirror equation, 1 over P plus 1 over Q is equal to 2 over R, but 2 over R is also equal to 1 over F, so we can just go ahead and get rid of the radius since we're not worried about it. It's given us the focal length. This is where should the object be placed, so we want to isolate the term with, the, with P in it, so we get 1 over P is equal to 1 over F minus 1 over Q. Then I want to find the common denominator, and so I'll get 1 over P is equal to Q minus F over QF. Now how I did that, I multiplied this term by Q over Q, so I got Q over QF. I multiplied this term by F over F, so I got F over QF. Common denominator, and I just simply combined it, Q minus F over QF. Now I just got to take the inverse of both sides. I'll get that, let me switch that up. I'll get P is equal to QF over Q minus F. So plugging in my numbers, I get that P is positive 26.56216 centimeters. So 26 and a half centimeters in front of the mirror, and that's what you'll get. Now I want to know the magnification. Magnification is equal to h prime over h, which is equal to negative q over p. My q is already negative, so that's going to turn that term positive, and I get that, uh, I get basically positive 10.8 over uh, 25.56, and uh, so my magnification is equal to 0 0.4. It's a positive magnification, so the image will be upright. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out my blog. The link is down in the About section of this video. And on the blog, you'll find cool stuff like other videos for the same chapter. And you'll also find uh, little download links where you can download calculators to uh, basically just punch in your numbers and solve these exact problems. So you won't even have to watch the video if you don't want to. The last thing I want to say is if you leave comments on YouTube, of course I will get around to responding, but I'm much faster if you leave them at the bottom of my blog, right down there. Enjoy your day.